Today is July 10, 2007. I am Jessica Clark. It is a pleasure to conduct this interview for the Dakota Memories Oral History Project near Gaffel, North Dakota. Uh, let's start by stating your full name. My name is Arthur Schmidt and uh, address Gaffel, North Dakota, zip code 58442. And where were you born? I was born in Newdorf uh, area. Uh, Year of 1922, May 10th. Did you ever hear a story about your birth? Yes, they said that I was a crier. <laughs> I was giving my mother a bad time too all the time, they say. I don't know, but anyway, that's what they tell me. So. <laughs> Were you born at home? Or? Yes, in the home place, yes. Yes. Do you know if a midwife was present or? Yes, yes. I didn't know it, but anyway, she was there, you see. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, can you share one of your earliest childhood memories? Well, I guess the, the first thing that I can remember is uh, when my dad took me over to my grandma's house. She lived right next door to us. And they, they took me, uh, she was always, we always went over there. She, they lived in a sod, she lived in a sod house for the summer months. And she always took, we went over there because we got some cookies and some nectar. Nectar was from Watkins or Raleigh at that time. Raleigh nectar, they were the sellers. And then, and then she was always telling us, you know, that she was explaining the, you know, the inside of the, Sod house to me was something, a long table with two benches on the side, you know, and then one chair on the one end and one chair on the other end. And one chair was for her and one was for grandpa. And the f family sat on the, you know, on the, the benches. And that's what I thought it was so neat, you know what I mean? And then she, when we come over there uh, years ago, you know, we was always sent over for New Year's wish. Well. We come over there, my dad, we had to say this in German. When ich ein glückselig neues Jahr, you know, Friede, Gesundheit, langes Leben. And, and then she said, well, you have to say one in Russian, too. And I said, well, we don't know anything. But she said, you're going to know it. And then she said, you know, you say this, Snowy hosom, snowy chosom, snowy hosom, shiskabosom. What it means, I don't know. <laughs> So that is what I really enjoy. And then knowing she always, when we, she took us into her house, you know, when we wished this, and then she said, and now you can have a peppermint candy. I mean, this is, and then another thing is when we always took her along to church, you know, so she come, she went out to her garden first. Well, there was a bush, a peppermint bush, you know, she took a leaf off. And she took it along to church to smell all the time. I thought that's so neat. You know. <laughs> that was really great. I thought, <laughs> uh, and that's that's something I'll never forget. You know. That was your father's mother. Mother, yes. Mm -hmm. What was her name? Uh, Carlina. How old were you when when you would go over and visit? Well, her? as soon as we could really walk, because she lived just down the hill. You know, and then we'd run back and forth, and, and I remember, you know, we'd run, and then we'd fall, we'd skin our knee, and then she's come, we'd cry, you know, and then she said, Come mal da rein, ich heile, heile Katze dreck, bis morgen frisch alles weg. And then she'd blow on it, you know. Did it make it feel better? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like, well, and, you know, we were just, I don't know, whatever, it was great, though, I think. And then I was, when I was bigger, and then I was sent over to my other grandma. She lived a mile away. And then uh, she, you know, grandpa was dead. You know, well, I never met him. So, And, and then uh, I was sent over there, and then they said, now you go along the Kuvik. You know, there's a cow patch, I mean, a road where the cattle walked. And you follow that road over to grandma's house. And when you come to the gate, you don't go through the wire. 
you lay on the ground and you slide through so you don't tear your pants and your shirt. <laughs> I thought. And then we come over there and then they had a root cellar. Well, then I had to go. I was like getting the stuff from, for her. Her eyesight was kind of bad. So I went to this root cellar. She said, now you get this and you get this. And when, you come, when you're done with this, you can have a little bottle of root beer that she made homemade, you know. I mean, so that was my treat. I mean, I thought that's really neat, you know. <laughs> and another thing was when uh, I had to help her, you know, they, they had a trough for cows, you know, and they were pastured, and then it was hot days, and the cows come, and she said, now you watch when the cows come, we have to water them, you know. I mean, because the trough, there's not much water in so, okay, we went up to this well, you know, and she went along. And then I went up. There was a, sort of an old pump, you know. So I started pumping. She said, it is not working. You have to. So she opened up the lid in the in the well box, you know, and there was a rope hanging there with a pail down below. So you had to bring up some water and pour it into that pump first, you know. So you get prime it, you know what I mean? And so you could start pumping. While I was pumping, she was pulling water up with the pail and dumping it into the... It was a, it was a, I think it's really great. <laughs> what was her name? Uh, let me see. Oh, Car Carolina, too. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Did your... Um, let's start with your, your um, father's parents. Okay. Did they come over from Russia? Yes, they they come over. They were uh, come over in eighteen. Uh, well, my dad was born in Eureka, South Dakota, at the eighteen ninety two. So they must have been there, uh, you know quite a while. But uh, anyway, uh, and then they were down there several years, and then they come up in eighteen. What is it? Eighteen ninety. No. Anyway, I think. <laughs> uh, anyway, it was in the 1800s. My dad was two years old, so whatever year that was. It was in the 1800s something. 1894. Right, yeah, started. something like that. Um, did, you, did you ever know or find out why they left Russia, your, your grandparents? Well, I don't know. It was just they said that uh, uh, they were. Uh, Grandma was always saying about the Dorf, you know, how they, they, uh, whenever you raise something, I guess the governor or the chandler or whoever it was, you know, they wanted the share all the time, and then you had to work for them, and you have you were supposed to join the army, I guess, you know, over there, and uh, and I guess you know that's how they. We're treated kind of at least this. What does they say? Katharina was a, I mean, a, what is her name? Anyways, queen or no? It was not a czar. Czar, yeah. Anyway, she was kind of rough, and I guess they they just decided to leave. Um. Did you know your grandfather? No, no. He was, uh, 1915. He died, and both of them and. And I was born in 22, so I did have no, but my grandmother, uh, she was, I knew her and uh, her kids, all the family, I knew them, you know. Do you know how your, your dad's father passed away? Well, I don't, I have really, really don't know. I mean, I know one, one who had blood poison, but I don't know which one, of a tooth, I believe, I believe. and the other one, uh, uh, oh, this the uh, grand grandpa Schmidt now. Okay. Um, let's see here. You knew your grandmother Schmidt. Yes. Very well. It sounds R like. Right. What, what what type of a person was she? Well, she was a uh, uh, little chubby gal, you know, wearing long dresses, you know. I mean, like an old timer, you know, and. Uh, she was kind of, she was good to us, but uh, she was kind of firm too, you know, I mean, uh, you didn't dare to t push her, you know, you, or else, you know, you got a weapon. Uh, not a really weapon, but anyway, a touch, you know, 
which was in the back end, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, and I know she was. It to me, it was just like she was from, you know, the old country. You know, she was always dressed like that, and it seemed like she was neat. I mean, always neat dressed. I mean, she was just a perfect. I have a picture of her out there. You know, I mean, but I mean, to me, she always had what do you call it? A white, they put white collars on, you know, I mean, they fake ones or whatever. <laughs> and I, I remember she, when she come to our house, she stayed at our house the last two years she lived. And uh, she would, she would uh, put on a dress and I said, Grandma, your dress is inside out. She says, you have to wear it like that. I said, why? Well, you wear it inside out during the week and then on the Sunday you wear it inside, you know, the right side, because you want to dirty both sides so it pays to wash. I mean, so, <laughs> so I thought it was great. Yeah, that's, that's what I know her, I mean. And she was all, when she was reading, she had uh, this, when she lived in the hot main house, I mean, then, then they had this nice coal stove, you know, with glass, plastic glasses, and it was a hard coal. You, you fill it up with coal, and it was glaring so nicely. And she'd sit with a big mantle light, you know, and then she'd be reading. They At that time, you know, they had these German papers, the Staatsanzeiger and the and the, the Code of Freibress. And then, you know, not everybody had it, but they some two people bought it, and then you passed it, you know. I mean, you, so you had to deliver, and then when I brought it there, and then she said, now you have to listen to this one here, you know, in German, you know, she read to me, she thought it was really interesting. Well, I didn't think it was, but anyway. <laughs> it was maybe months old, but anyway, you know, it was, uh, I think, I think it's great. <laughs> did your grandmother ever learn how to speak English, or did she just- Yeah, speak well, they, you know words, but I mean, not she was. She could tell you know what to tell us, but it was always German, mostly German, yeah. And then she was the one that uh, taught us how to pray in the evening before we go to bed. You know. Do you remember the prayer that she yes. prayed? Yes. Midi bin ich geht meine Augen zu, habe ich Unrechtheit getan, sieh es lieber Gott nicht an. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, now I lay me down to sleep, you know, just about like that, you know. Okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's sort of a translation, you know. So, was your grandmother Lutheran? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, and I know she was, uh, she was always reading this German Bible, you know. I mean, it was a big book, you know, I mean, and words, I mean. And then she was teaching me how to read German. Well, I was confirmed German, too. But... <clears throat> in a way, uh, I, she could write German, she could read German, and everything, you know, the writing. And my, so could my mom. She could read German and write German letters. And I knew how to write German, but I can't, I can't read it anymore. I can't write it. But you can obviously still speak it. Yes, I, <laughs> and I can read German too. I mean, and, uh, the prints, but not the writing, I can't. Oh yeah, I have... Uh, Books out here that we have. Uh, we, I work every once in a while. I work on it. Yes, and I'm trying to. I've got the A B C letters, but I just don't know. It's not working. <laughs> so, did you teach your children how to speak German? Yes, the, our our three oldest uh, boys they couldn't speak English when I mean English when they went started school because my mom had died. You know at the age of 51 and 49, and then our kids were born later, and then my dad stayed at our house, you know, I mean, with the kids all the time upstairs, you know. Well, then he was always talking German with them. And so uh, we had a schoolhouse right beside the, the farm here. I mean, a little ways off, so they went to school here. And then we started, uh, and, and anyway, and then later on it, merged into town, you know. And uh, my wife was a school teacher, and the kids didn't know how to speak English. Can you imagine that? 
<laughs> my wife taught school out of high school. Uh, she taught school eight years, you know. And then you had to have a, you had to go to college or something, you know, and things got, I mean, you had to be smarter, I guess, or something like that. So. Um, let's go back to your grandparents for a while. Let's look at your, your mom's side. Okay. Um, you, you didn't know your grandfather because he no, passed away no. in 1915. Do you know what he died from? I think it was leukemia, and that's what my mom died through, and one of her sisters died at leukemia too. That's the way I understood, yes. And your, your grandmother on this side lived further away from you, about a mile? Yeah, away. a mile away, yeah. What, what type of a person was she? Well, she was a, a kind, kind lady. She'd do anything for you. I remember, I remember when I had to bring some stuff and, you know, went from the, I, uh, she'd always treat me, you know, you, it was not really a sweet thing, but she thought it was good for you, you know what I mean? Uh, to me it was sour, you know, but anyway, she tried to be nice, you know what I mean? She was a friendly lady, I mean, and a kind lady too. She'd do anything for you. And and another thing, I was, when I, when I went over to her house, you know, is, when I had to bring some stuff, you know, I had to bring some cream one time, you know, and then she put the cream into a, a syrup pail, you know, and threw a, a knife in there, and then she'd hit it, hit it, you know, like this. A few minutes, you know, she had butter. That's how I can remember that so well. I mean, I said, and then she opened up, you know, and then. She took the butter, poured out the uh, buttermilk, you know, was was left, you know, and she saved that. She said, we have to make fannekeekle, uh, you know, buttermilkkeekle, you know, pancakes. And and then away, and then she took the butter out, and she put it on a pile in the dish, you know, and the spoon was the one that kept, you know, knocking it, you know, to to make butter. But that was something I. I said, you know, how them old people did things, you know, I mean, it's just wonderful, I mean, and how hard she worked, you know, she's trying to raise her family, you know, uh, after, you know, he, her husband was dead, you know, young when he died, and she had all these kids working for her. She hired out, my mom was hired out when she was confirmed, you know, I mean, to neighbors in town, and the other daughter was working down in Fredonia with somebody, you know, helping out, you know, to earn money, you know, I mean, to, I mean, to make it, you know, and her oldest son, he was 15 years old when, when he had to take over the farm, you know, trying to keep the farm going, you know, and he said, you know how it is with working with horses and uh, everything, I mean, uh, it was just, I know, it, uh, everybody was working hard and that was tough on him, I know, I know that, I remember that so well. How many children did she have when her husband passed away? There was a, my mom was the oldest, and then there was a brother, John and Eva, they were twins. They were born in 1900. My mom was born in 1898. She was born in Russia. And and uh, then there's, uh, let me see, Katie. Katie, and then there's Peter, and there is uh, uh, Julia, and and uh, Fred, and Becky, Rebecca. So she had a rather large right, family yeah. to take care of. Right, and I have a picture of the family out there too. We we'll, you can see, you know. Um. If your mom was born in Russia, they, your grandparents obviously came immigrated from Russia. Right. Um, was your mom the only child that they had in Russia? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. She was a baby when they immigrated. Right. She was a baby when they come over here. Um, did your grandparents ever talk about what it was like, or grandmothers ever talk about what it was like coming over to America, what the voyage was like? Well, they they really did say well. The trouble is that, you know, we were not interested in it, too, you know. See, that's the problem. And now, 
I mean, my, my, my wife was saying she stayed at her grandma's house in town when she went to high school. And she was always talking about, you know, the Dorf and all that, you know, and how the the Russian soldiers were marching and stuff like that. And she said she was trying to tell me things and I did not want to know it, you know. And now she says, I wish we could we could ask questions. Now we would like to know it, you know. But, I mean, uh, well, at that time you just didn't think about it. But anyway, I know it It said that, you know, how days, how they were sick, you know, and come over on the on the boat or whatever it was ship, how they, you know, how people died, you know, didn't make it, children died, you know, that's all that I know. I mean, and what did they, how did they, I suppose, threw them in the sea? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, how about your dad's side? How many kids did they have? Well, uh, there was Louis, Louis, he was the oldest, and then there was uh, Christina, and then there's Fred and Barbara and Bertha. Uh huh, Arthur, come on. And Lydia, and then uh, Matilda and Katharina, and then my dad. So your dad was the baby? Right. No, not the baby, but anyway, Katharina was a cripple, she was the baby. What was wrong with her? I don't know, she was just born, I don't know what was wrong. Anyway, she was in a wheelchair all the time, I remember, until she died. <coughs> you said that you, you knew your aunts and uncles yes. real well? Um, well, I mean, the uncles, not really. I mean, because they, uh, they took up land in Montana. I mean, so I really, I knew them. I mean, they come out once in a while. We, they come out to North Dakota. And then I know we went out one time to Montana to visit him. One of them I knew real well, but the oldest one I didn't really know much. So why did they take land up in Montana? Well, that was, uh, uh, the government gave them so much land to start out with, like they, you know, I mean, or what are they, anyway, whatever, that was why they went out there. How old were you when you went out to visit them? I was about... Eight years old, we drove out, and uh, it took us two days to get out there. We, <laughs> my my dad had an old twenty-seven Chevy car with curtains, you know, curtains on, and it was, I think, a hundred degrees and no air conditioning, you know. We had, to, uh, it, <laughs> uh, anyway, it was there, and then we had flat tires, and you know, at that time, you. You patch your tires, you had the patching equipment, you had your tire pump and everything with, you know. So you sat on the road, my dad, we patched the tire, put it back on, pumped it in with air, off we went again, you know. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was really interesting in a way, but, you know, for me, but anyway. And then, of course, what I liked about the trip was my mom packed sandwiches, you know, I mean. And you had some Kool-Aid, you know, Watkins, you know. <laughs> that was really the treat, you know. So what type? What would you? What type of sandwiches would she pack? Well, normally, uh, it was syrup. <laughs> syrup. That was the only thing that stayed alive, you know, in the hot days, you know. It, or jelly, of course, you know. And so, uh, anyway, I, I know it was syrup. That was the main thing, you know, in my days. So when you went out to Montana, it was your dad, your mom, you, were there, did you have any other siblings with you at that time? Yeah, my brothers, brother and sister were along. So was it a crammed car? Well, no, the, and my grandma, of course, you know, my grandma was sitting in the middle and that was the cramp, yeah, I mean, we were kind of filled up. So we had three in the front and, and uh, four in the back. So on a... On a Two-day trip, how did you guys entertain yourself? Well, uh, the only thing I know is uh, what, uh, if things got kind of loud, you know, and my dad starts singing or, or yelling, one of the two, you know what I mean? So <laughs> did your dad sing a lot when you were growing up? Oh, yeah. He was, that was the main thing in our house. Uh, and that's why I get to so used to... I love his... I don't know why. Anyway... Uh, Every morning, it seems like he started out a song. 
Heidi Stein and Shane and Morgan, was can mas besseres wünschen, dann müssen wir unseren Bot nun danken, für was er uns hat gegeben. That is one of his songs. I, I thought it's, he always sang that, whether the 30s, you know, I mean, his heart was hurting, you know. I remember that so well when things were going wrong, you know, and oh, I, I, I just see him. Everything went to my, my mom said, now what are we going to do? Uh, there's a day when we were planting, he had a, there was a little field of wheat, you know, and it was about this high, heads about this tall, you know. And he said, now we're going to fix up the header, grease it and everything. Tomorrow morning we're going to go out and header. Well, so in the evening before we went to turn in, it seemed like he said, well, I think it's going to be windy tomorrow. You know, it kind of got dark. The next morning we woke up and grasshoppers all over and everything was gone. You know, the wheat was chewed down. And then my mom says, now what are we going to do? She said, you know, this was supposed to be enough for our flour, you know, for the winter to eat, you know, and maybe enough seed for to reseed again next spring, you know. And then my dad says, no holding his hands like this, and he said, well, I guess there will be another way. <laughs> and you could tell he was hurting, you know, but what can you do, you know, but, uh, so, I mean, that's just one of them. And then another thing is, when I was small, when uh, there, was, there was no price for the cattle, you know, and, and you couldn't ship in no place, you know. So the government come out and they shot the cattle, you know, that we, we couldn't have, and then we had to dig trenches, you know, and the ground was hard, and we didn't have no digging, you know. So my dad had two horses, and we had a hand plow. We tried opening up the grounds, you know, to get the deep enough because you were supposed to bury them so much, so deep in the ground, you know, and cover them. And then we had a scraper with two horses, you know, you pulled out the dirt, put it on a pile, <laughs> then we went through with the hand plow again, you know, to try and get it, you know, the hard ground, to loosen it up. Uh, we worked days, and hot, oh, I said, and you had to get those cattle out of the way, you know. Uh, I said, it was really sad. <laughs> so you said the government would shoot the cattle, was that because you just could not feed them? Well, yeah, there was nothing to eat. Well, I mean, you wanted to sell them, but I mean, uh, because, you know, you could only use, have so many. So, and there was no market for them because you maybe got $6 a head. So, <laughs> but then the government paid you the $6. I mean, at least, you know, I mean, but, but where, where were you going to ship them, you know? I know we, we herded some cattle down from Mount Place down to Fredonia. There's the only stockyard left where the train was coming through. So we herded down the cattle. Well, by the time the, the freight was on, you know, you, sometimes you even had to pay for the cattle when the, by the time they got down. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, I said, I don't know, if people nowadays, oh man. Was, was that during the Dirty 30? Right, yes. Was the grasshoppers during that time as well? Yes, right. And then, of course, you know, the, uh, after that, the thistles, you know, that's how we made hay, it was the thistle. You know, I mean, that grew because of the dry, you know. And then you had to watch the thistle, so you had to cut them before the stickers come out. I mean, so you, and that's what you fed your cows. Yeah. That, I mean, it's, <laughs> I, I said, we, we're so lucky here. We think we got it bad, but I mean, it, but anyway, it's over with. Montana to visit your um, uncles. You're about eight, so that was in the 30s as well. The early 30s. Was it bad yeah. out in Montana as well? Well, that that is worse out there. Yeah, I mean, but it, it seemed like uh, uh, it seemed like when when it rained, it hailed. I mean, instead of rain, you know, you, you had hail too. You knocked everything down. And I was just out here not too long ago to the out to Montana. I have a son in Willis, and then he took me out to Circle, Montana. That's where 
the ranches out there. And we walked in there. They didn't have any crops for three years yet, you know, I mean. And uh, then they had to buy the hay. The cattle were walking around looking for grass, you know, I mean. Uh, <laughs> they were just a skeleton, you know, really. And it is uh, so, really, we are fortunate here, you know, I mean, compared. But anyway, even my, I have a book from the 30s out here. And even out west, western part, was worse than we were here, you know, because killdeer and them, you know, they, uh, well, there are pitches there that, ah, uh, I mean, how they, <laughs> they sat there, you know, with just cardboard around the outside of the house, you know, I mean, tapered up, you know, to keep warm and stuff like that. So I guess we were still, well, you know, it was cold here too because you, I mean, when you had a, you know, you had to make fuel out of cow manure, you know. You packed it down and, I mean, hauled it out in the winter months in a round place, you know. And and then you had a, in the spring when it thawed melting, you know, and then you'd run, put horses on and they'd walk them around and you'd mix it up, you know, and then you'd walk them until it was packed, you know, solid. And then you had to spade it, you know. you cut it in pieces. And that's where these big uh, uh, fuel st stacks are out there, you know, manure stacks with the, for firewood, I mean, for to keep warm. So did you have to help make Yes, that? you had a, well, and my brother and I and my mom, of course, and uh, you had a spade, you know, you go spade this way and the other guy would spade it in squares, you know. I mean, and then you'd set it up so it'd dry. And then when it was dry, then you put it in a sort of on a cross higher, I mean, more on then. And then just before it got cold, you had to put it on a stack. I mean, like a stack, so if the snow would come or, you know, so you'd get it out. Um, during the Dirty Thirties, did you ever see a dust storm? Yes, lots of it. Yeah, there was a, like, the thistles blew in with the wet storm, you know, and then the sand blew onto the thistles so your fence was covered, you know, and, you know, with sand, sand all over. So uh, before, sometimes you could remove the thistles, but you had to go along the fence with forks, burn it, or, but, I mean, a lot, a lot of times you couldn't work while the storm was blowing. So, anyway, it filled up the fences, and uh, then you had, a, like, years, and we, this farm next door here, uh, the neighbor, then when we moved down here, my son bought it now. And there's a rut, you know, just like a, a bank, you know. And so he went ahead and he, he got the blade in a blader coming in and he scraped it off. Here, there's all the woven wire in there, you know, I mean, what, which was blowed over, you know, and he smoothened it out. So all the wire we had to take, he took all the wires out and everything. Yeah, that's that is bad, especially here, s s sandy soil, you know, that's that's one thing. So, I guess, at our place it was not quite as bad because we had hard, more hard ground, you know, I mean, but still we had a lot of dust storms and it is just, I know, it is terrible. I mean, you... <laughs> Sometimes you wondered, you know, your windows were not, you know, at that time were not, dust was in the house, you know. And you put, oh, my mom hung clothes up, you know, blankets up and kind of hold it out and, you know, so it settled in the back. And, oh, I tell you, it was, it was just terrible. <laughs> and then all the old buildings were old anyway, you know. I mean, really, uh, uh, you thought you had them pretty good, but... And then winter months, you had to nail cardboard on the window outside, you know, to keep it so it'd stay warm. And you put cardboard around, uh, paper around the foundation. And then you'd, we'd have to haul manure and put it up against the paper so for the winter months. And then in the spring, you had to haul that manure away again, you know. I mean, so uh, it, it, is, uh, it is different, you know, compared to now. I mean, so we're so lucky. Your uncles out in Montana, were they cattle ranchers? 
Or well, <laughs> they <laughs> they were they were trying to farm, but anyway, now the young boy is a cattle. Uh, I mean, the son took over, and he he was he was more in ranching. But uh, the dad, well, you know, they didn't have many cows. I mean, uh, but they tried with horses farming, and well, well, you know, <laughs> the soil was not good, and uh, I don't know, it was just not right. <laughs> Did your dad's? This is your dad's brother. Your dad's brother. right. Did your dad's sisters stay in the area? Did yeah, they they all they all stayed around a gackle area. But one one was down in Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska. Did you ever get to visit her? Yes. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you got to go down there? Well, that's when I was, uh, uh, well, even my wife and I already, when we went down, I mean, that's when we really got to go down. But she'd come up every year to see, see Grandma, you know. So she was mostly coming up all the time instead of us going down. But we were in down, uh, uh, anyway, my wife and I, we'd done uh, travel, you know, we drove quite a bit because my brother, my brother, he, the youngest brother is a minister, a pastor, you know, well, he's retired now. And, and he went to school in uh, Waverly, Iowa, and then he went to Dubuque, Iowa, so we had it, my wife and I, we took my dad down all the time, you know, I mean, to travel. So, so we got around, we stopped here and there, you know, I mean, visit, you know, so, yeah. So the, your dad's sisters that stayed in the area, were you close to them? Yes, well, see, they all come to visit grandma, and grandma was either, at well, first she stayed at her house until she couldn't, then, well, then they, she stayed at our house, and then they all come to visit us at our house all the time. But normally, when they come, when Grandma was at her house, you know, the old people stayed at their house and the young people at, you know, the kids at our house. <laughs> so what would the kids like when they were, when the old people were over there? Well, got into trouble, I suppose. I mean, anyway, uh, we we had these games, you know, that they always pulled. Uh, pum pum pull away. It's just a, a broomstick, you know. And then two guys were on this side, and the older boys were sitting on this side, and the other two on this side. And then they put, like me and my youngest cousin, we had to put our legs over the top of that stick, you know. And then one side would let loose, and <laughs> you'd tumble over, you know. I mean, and then you play tricks on you, you know. Uh, and then towards when we got bigger, you know, we we started playing instruments, you know. I mean, so we had. <laughs> I I have a, uh, my brother. He played a, a accordion, you know, and uh, my cousin played an accordion. My brother played my dad's old accordion. It's a, I was trying to get that accordion here today too, but uh, it must be up someplace in the other place, you know. And I told my nephew to find it, and my dad he used to play on dances too. You know, house dances, you know. So when my when my brother start start playing, then my dad wouldn't play it anymore. You know, I mean. So my my brother took over, and then uh, we bought an old guitar. You know, to cost a lot of money, three bucks. You know, and a mandolin we bought for a dollar and a half, and a harmonica we bought. You know, uh, that I think is fifty cents, something like that. Anyway, and then. My brother played the accordion, and then I, my youngest brother played the mandolin, and I the guitar. So my brother said, made himself a piece of wire, you know, and hooked the harmonica on there too yet. And then we played the harmonica, you know, and then we had sort of an old-time band, you know. <laughs> that was, we'd done that at home, though. We never played it for nobody else. Anyway, and then... We one time we uh, my other uh, cousin he played a a piano key accordion you know so they come down and then we uh, had this band playing you know I mean and we had this old telephone line you know there's thirty people on the line you know and I started ringing you know a long ring you know and I opened up and I said now you can hear the Hoosier Hotshots playing you know and 
and the next morning, the telephone rang. Uh, and somebody said, I think I have kids for them telephone yesterday. <laughs> they weren't the telephone, you know. And uh, so then we got, we got punished, you know. Well, anyway, we couldn't t use the telephone anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you got into mischief as a young as a young boy, what what would be a punishment? Well, you you had to do something, you know, and it was not. It was sort of like tomorrow we're going out picking rocks, and or you're gonna we're gonna haul this manure tomorrow, you know, or. Or something like that, or you had to get up early in the morning, you know, I mean, earlier than normal, you know, I mean, there's always a way, you know, that yeah, you got it, you know. Uh, there's only one time I got the strap from my mom. And I got away, only I crawled under a bed that was too low, and my back end was out. And then she was telling me that this is just the way I want you. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, there's sometimes you know you got uh, the strap you know. What did you get the strap for from your mom? Do you remember? <laughs> well, I really don't know because I was the mischievous guy. That you know, remember that that's what they said, the uh, the schnitzori. <laughs> so why did they call you that? Well, because you were wild, you know, restless. You know, I mean. And you'd pull things, you know, that you were not supposed to do. Uh, I guess that's that was me, you know. Yeah. My other other brothers were nice, and I was the, well, I don't know. You were a handful. <laughs> yes, that's what they tell me. Uh, I never heard it from my mom, but you know, I know she must have been tired going to church, you know, with me, you know. <laughs> what was church like with you? Well, I mean, if I fell asleep, I was okay, you know. On that, we, I don't know, really, you know. <laughs> but when I was bigger, you know, I was, well, the only thing you, they come up sometimes and you sat alone and then they come and pulled your ear, you know, and pulled you back to, the, to with them, you know. And then you behaved, you know. But that was when I was small, when I was kind of wild, they say. Restless, of course. Church was too long, I guess. <laughs> How long was church services back then? Well, not any longer than now, but because, you know, they had a reading service and we had a pastor come once a month, you know, I mean, to our church, and he was from Streeter, you know, I mean, so uh, Neuter at that time belonged to Streeter. And uh, I, I remember, like, Pastor Nagel, he was the guy, the minister that started these churches here, he was a missionary from Cullum. He come and he started St. James, and then he come to Newdorf, and then he went to Streeter. And he was the one that baptized me, and uh, I, I, I remember him. Uh, they, uh, they, he had four churches, you know, uh, three out in the country and the one in Streeter. One, once a month, he'd come to our church, you know. And during the summer months, he'd come down with a one-horse bucky. From nine miles, he'd drive, and the, he'd come down, and he'd come, always come to our house. And then my dad would unhitch the, the uh, horse and put, put it in the barn and feed it, you know, and then he'd take him to church. And then after church, he'd, he'd bring him home. My mom had a big dinner, you know, and then he ate dinner. And then at 2 o'clock he said, well, Betsy, that was the horse, let's go. We have to go home before dark. So he took off in this bucky again, you know, and trotted up the streeter. When you were growing up, when did baptism take place? Was, were you a baby? When you yes. Baptized? Uh, I, was, I was born in uh, May, and in July I was baptized the same year. I mean, I think so many months or, or so many weeks, so you had to be, I guess. maybe I was so mean already that they tried to cure me or no. No, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, that's what I thought. <laughs> um, okay, we talked about your, your dad's brothers and sisters. How, about, what about your mom's brothers and sisters? Did you know them real well? Yes. Did they stay in the area for the most part? Yes. Well, 
uh, they were mostly in the same area. Uh, the furthest one was away with steel. Well, you know, she married uh, up there. Uh, two of them, two of them, they uh, were, well, I don't know, in the 30s or something like that when they got married. They were brought together with a matchmaker, you know. I mean, years ago, the guy brought these men down and I remember I was at my grandma's house that day when they come down and then I said, they had this little guy, the little guy was the matchmaker, you know, I mean, he's maybe four or five feet tall, you know. And then I said to my grandmother, what, what did they want? She said, this is nichts für dich zu wissen, you know, that, it's nothing for me to know, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, okay, and then they went home, you know, and then a week later they come back and then the minister come, you know, and then they married. So this guy took this one and this guy took this one, you know. And then uh, the wedding was over. They put in a few clothes and they took them along and they were gone. <laughs> so was your, um, your dad and mom, were they set up with a match? No, no, they... no, no. They just met each other. But I mean, just these two were, I don't know, they... Whatever, and anyway, but the rest were all married, you know. But and one of them was uh, an old maid, you know. I mean, the youngest one, Becky, she was an old maid. She moved into town with Grandma, and and that's why I had to go over there all the time because Becky and Fred, they were the farm, you know, they were running the farm, so they were out in the field, and then I had to stay with Grandma. Yes. <laughs> and and the rest were all. I mean, I I know I had to work. My dad always, when I was 13, 14, I think, something like that, 13 and with 14 maybe, uh, my dad always hired me and my older brother, we were hired out, you know, in the spring. And uh, my my brother, he was, he had a good job, you know, he, he could do farming work, you know, I mean, like run horses. But I was like the handyman, you know, I was, I was, Hired out to my uncle, you know, twelve dollars a month and board and room, and and then my dad took the money, of course, because I was too young to spend money yet, and 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 the work that I had to do is something. Ah, <laughs> uh, he was out. The, my uncle was out farming, and then he, I had to grind feet, you know, and they had this old, great ah. Uh, well, it's like a gear, round gear, you know, posted down on the ground, you know, and then there's sprocket laying on top and the, the grinder or a box where, the, where you pour it in, the grain was in, in the middle. And then you, there was a pole going out here and a rod going out this way. And you put the horse on the end here, hitch the horse on there and tied it onto that rod so it has to keep going around circles, you know. And then you, it ground, you know, and then you filled up the bucket, then I had to pour it into the bin and then bring it out again. I mean, it seemed like I was grindy feet all day long, you know. <laughs> How old were you? Well, maybe 13, 14, something like that. <laughs> uh, it was sort of interesting, you know, what the things you had to do, you know I mean? Then always get the cows and you had to, do this, and you had to do that, you know, watch. Did you, did you like working um, with your uncles better than working at home, or? No, I I didn't want to go, but I mean, you know, you, my dad needed money, and uh, I didn't like it, but uh, it was just one of those things, you know, and I'd done that till I was 16 years old. Every year, every year I had to go to that place, and then, the best thing was, you know, I mean, he had no car. So, so we drove to, uh, we drove to church nine miles. Can you imagine sitting in with the suit in the back of the wa wagon? Nine miles. Sundays. Then they'd come to my house, my mom's house for dinner. And then after dinner, well, then we drove back home again. Ah, it was, uh, you know, it, and what what would we do nowadays, you know, if you'd have to sit in the back of a wagon, huh? 
<laughs> so did he did, did he not have any boys of his own? Is that no, what he needed to No, know? he didn't have no boys. He just had girls. And they were too small yet. They were quite a bit young, younger than I am. So that's why I and well of course the whenever they went someplace, you know, we had a uh he come to our house and uh you had a take care of the farm when they I mean milk the cows and stuff like that, you know, do their chores while they were they normally took a couple of days off. They went to Petty Bone, you know, to his father had a Model T car. So they drove up with the team to his father. Then they used his vehicle to go up to visit, you know. I mean, then they stayed two days. There was two sisters up there. Well, you know, you have to visit them all, you know. So to kill two cats at one stone or whatever. <laughs> Art, um, you knew your aunts and uncles real well. Um, how about cousins? Did you know them? Yes, I think I think in I uh, the only ones that I really didn't know were the ones in Montana really that well. But now, now I know them real well. I mean, you know, we, uh, my wife and I, we used you know, when my folks were, we really didn't get together much, but. The Montana one cousin, they always come in too. I mean, every year. But now my wife and I, we start traveling, you know, and then we'd go out to Montana every once in a while. And my oldest, uh, oldest uncle Louis, he, he died, and uh, well, I mean, it's a family, three wives he had. So the last wife, you know, I mean, there is a. So, uh, when he died, and then we went out, that's when we went out to Montana at that time for the funeral. And then we, my dad stayed out, and he brought in all the kids, you know. I mean, we brought in all the kids, you know, that from Uncle Louis. And then we had uh, Pauline here, stayed with us. Uh, Emma stayed with us. At our house, you know, we raised them until they were able to go to work. And my grandma had a brother, I mean, a cousin, a boy, that stayed with her. My uncle, Ackermans, had a boy that stayed with him until he was confirmed. Then he got kicked out, you know. And uh, the oldest ones, two of them, they were old enough. Well, they they got jobs right away as mates, you know, working around. So, But they were all around, around here, you know, so. So with your aunts and uncles and cousins, was there a family that you were closest to? Yeah, they're just the Ackermans because they were the ones that lived the closest and the fishes. I mean, they were the ones that n normally come here, all the, and the gingers, of course. They were always c coming to visit Grandma, so so they were we were close with them. And he, they're the one, the cousins, you know, we got into trouble with playing on the telephone, you know. <laughs> What were their names, the, the cousins' names that you got? Uh, Elvin and Melvin Ackerman. And uh, then they had my cousin, Bill Schmidt, who stayed with them. Well, he always come down. Otto Schmidt stayed at my grandma's house. So we all got together, you know, I mean, and that's the problem. What yeah. types of things would you do when you would get together? Well, like, <clears throat> wintertime, you know, we'd... Uh, uh, we had we were sort of on a hill, and then the snow. We'd go out sledding during the night, you know, and we'd have the sled, you know. You'd go down, see how close you could get to the telephone post. And I made it the closest. I hit it. <laughs> Did that hurt? Yes, I seen stars. <laughs> they had to carry me. <laughs> <laughs> they had to carry me uphill until I was back to normal again. And then, and then I know that uh, in the summertime, you know, they had this. Uh, we had this bucky, you know, a bucky with two seats, you know. And then they took the the oh, what the poles off, and then they put ropes on the side. And, so they were sitting on top and steering it with that rope, you know. I mean, to, uh, one guy, you know. And they were sitting on the top, you know, on the two seats, and there's a little feet box in the back, the back seats, you know. 
That's where they put me and my cousin, the small one, in. Back, we're sitting, you were in with your butt, you know, and we were going down that hill, you know. And then the rope tore and we hit the telephone post. Well, they jumped, <laughs> but we could, we didn't know what happened. <laughs> so, uh, we knocked our heads, we broke the seat down and whatnot all, and we're sore for a while, but on that, it's not bad, you know. Well, I had a broken, uh, I had a broken arm. We had a Shetland pony. We have a picture out here, you know. Uh, and uh, my, we had company one one Sunday, and then my, uh, we had him po pulled to, onto the, you know, for so we could use it because we had to get cattle with him all the time. So my brother he takes him and holds him, and then he tells me this. He put me on top, you know, and I sat on top, and the pony bit him, you know, in the hand, and he let loose, and I was going with the pony. <laughs> I fell off, and I broke my arm. So we, my dad says, No, yeah, company come, you know, it's a fresh to an the arm. So we had to go down to Wishik to the Christian doctor, you know. He's the guy that, well, he's sort of a doctor. He, at least he straightened it out, you know. So did they cast it back yeah, then? Yeah, right. No, huh? No, no, no. Just wrapped it, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That. Ah, <laughs> uh, anyway, that was one of those things, you know. And then, of course, you know, you he rode and we rode, and then he we'd go down, he sideswipe, and we'd fall off, you know. Then we'd have to walk and get the cows, and he'd go home. I mean, as uh, we had no saddle, of course, you know. So it was interesting. <laughs> Besides the broken arm, any other injuries or illnesses? Well, <laughs> I, I had ankle out of joint and stuff like that, but other than that, there was nothing serious, you know. And sickness, I really wasn't sick much, but uh, I remember one year my uh, dad was when we were binding, you know, I mean, and the horses are far away, and then they have this long whip, you know, to keep the horses, you know, he had to go so fast to ground drive, you know, to cut the wheat. And then he broke this whip. So he uh, uh, set a, a seat on the front, behind the horses, way down underneath, you know, uh, and he sat me on there. I had to keep those horses going, you know. And there's 90 degrees, rust coming all over, and dust, you know. And instead of giving me something to put over my mouth, you know, I did, they didn't. Well, I, well, at least that time, nobody really knew anything anyway. But anyway, and then I got so sick, you know, I was sick for, oh. Oh, my dad says, you know, you can take it another day, you know. So we put it back on again. I went in there again, you know. Oh, I said, uh, and I was so sick. I'd, then we had an old doc in town, you know, Doc Merkel, they called him. And they got him out. They took me in there, and he said, well, what's the matter with you? Just keep throwing up till you get this out. I said, well, there's nothing to throw up, you know. <laughs> it is the dust, you know, really, that got into my lungs, you know. Uh, and then one time I got uh, something in my eye, steel, and then I went up to Streeter, and it, this, the doctor's name was Stokes. So I went up there, and I said, I got this in my eye, and then he started working, and then... He said, well, what's the matter with you? Why don't you keep that eyeball still so I can get this out? And have you ever tried getting your eye, keeping an eye? You know, he could have given me something. but the... So finally he put his finger in my eye and held my eye, and then he got it out. Then I had, then I had a sore eye again. <laughs> so those were things, you know. I mean, it's just, uh, uh, anyway, doctors. They were great doctors in a way. That's about it. You wear glasses right now. Did you wear glasses when you were a boy? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where would you go to get glasses? Well, I don't know. They had a a, a guy in uh, in steel, you know, that an opt 
optimist or what did no what did they call him optician yeah yeah something like that anyway they had a guy up there and then I got it and I remember uh, I was wearing them and then we went up to my cousin's place in Ackermans and then we went ice skating. And I took my glasses off, and I come back, and I sat on them. <laughs> so uh, I come home, and, you know, this was not a very good thing, you know, that you sat on your glasses, because they cost a lot of money. At that time, they cost $3, you know, I mean, and that was a lot of money at that time. <laughs> so, oh, interesting. Things like that happen. Do you know how old you were? Uh, well, it was high school, so I had to be about 15, 16, something like that. So how did, you, how did your parents know, or how did you know that you needed to go get them? Well, my, I was sitting in the back at the schoolhouse, and my teacher said he can't see. <laughs> so, so that's, I guess, so we, I had to sit up in front, and then, you know, I mean. So that's what you have. Uh, we, I even have some old school desks upstairs, you know. And uh, some books, uh, old from the schoolhouse. Really? Yeah. And we had, a, well, I have a picture of the, this, uh, my son, uh, he was in Chicago. He works for Delta, the youngest boy at Delta Airlines. And, and uh, he brought home this kid from Tennessee. And, uh, and he stayed with, you know, well, he always brought different guys home. Anyway, he stayed, and he went over to this schoolhouse, and he set up the, you'll see the picture later on, of the books and everything, and the map, you know, that you, different kinds of uh, states, you know. And it's so real, you know, I mean, how the old schoolhouse looks, you know. And then I have uh, uh, the old um, uh, this, oh, depression book over there. I have a... Uh, a place where this guy eats out of the syrup pail where we always went to school with, you know, you took your lunch along in a syrup pail. So, I mean, that's all to come yet, you know. Hmm. So, you know, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's talk about your parents for a little bit. Okay. Let's start with your dad. What was his name? John. John. And where was John born? In Eureka, South Dakota. Okay. And he, if I remember right, he came up when he was young, up to this right. region, right? So did he ever talk to you about what his childhood was like? Not really. Not really. I don't, I don't know. Well, he, he, the only thing he always told us, when I was your age, I, I had to do it too. That's all I know. <laughs> what type of, of, of a person was your father? Well, he was kind and firm. Uh, you did not uh, try and uh, uh, coax him into doing get away with it or something, or or else it could have been trouble. You know, I mean, but he he said, "Do it one more time," and he had this strap, this wide, you know, that he 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 used a straight edge, you know, to shave all the time on on that letter, you know. And he said, you know, da kracht. <laughs> it's going to crack, you know. When he, but he never used it. I mean, he never, that he had to hit us, you know. But uh, we knew what time it was. Uh, you better straighten out. So how would he um, show his love to the family? Well, I don't know. I, I think... Uh, like uh, every once in a while, you know, you'd uh, he'd take us along. Like once a month, once a year, we'd get to Jamestown to buy clothes, or if we didn't have it in town, you know. And then he'd uh, we every year, once a year, you had to go to Napoleon to the county seat to pay taxes and stuff like that. And then he took us along, and then we went into the butcher shop. He he bought a bologna and a and a loaf of bread, and then we could get some strawberry pop. And that was a treat. I thought it's really neat. Bologna and bread. 
<laughs> and it's not a cafe. It was just a, a table you sat around and it's Essen. And it's good. <laughs> what about um, uh, anger? If he got upset with you guys, how would he express his anger? Well, I think when he got angry, he didn't talk. He just he just wouldn't talk to nobody <laughs> until he straightened out. I guess you know. I mean, that's the only thing I know. I remember him. You know, he was. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's just that kind of a guy. And you know he was hurting, and yet he wanted to say, and yet he didn't. But anyway, we understood. So I guess we felt a punishment just like he did, you know. So I guess it, uh, that's the way I, I, I would say. How about um, fear? Did he ever show any fear when you were growing up? Uh, not, not really that I know of. I mean, uh the only time, well, the only time with storms, but I mean, other than that, I mean, I know when tore down the buildings, the barn, and but you, we thought the house was going to, and uh, that's about all that I know. Uh, so was it like a tornado, or was it just a bad windstorm? Or? It was, well, I don't know. Uh, it was, uh, we, anyway. It was sort of like a tornado, yeah. And it was strong wind, I guess it was, or whatever. Yeah. Can you describe your relationship with your father? Were you close to him? Yes, yes, we were, I think, uh, uh, especially when mom had died, you know, I mean, well, we were always there to help anyway, I mean, but... When we got married, you know, we all got married, uh, and then we left, and then my brother stayed on the farm. Well, then they moved to town, uh, on, had a little hobby farm, like cows and stuff, you know, that he milked. And and uh, he'd always come down here to check up the crop, and and, the, and then when Mom had died, and then he was down, stayed down here, well, then he was sort of with me all the time. He was running tractors and stuff like you know, I mean, he was still young, too. And then after that, he got a job in the state highway department. And then he he got married to this, my aunt. I mean, my mom's sister. Uh, and then they lived in town. So, th but other than that, by that, I mean, until then, he stayed at our house. Which was six years, I think, something like that. Well, I th I, th I think the only th thing that I know is uh, when he played on and barn dances or stuff. I suppose well, that's what I think. That's all that I know of, because she went to dances and you know the fa Ben's family did, and so did, and I guess that's where he met her. That's what I understand. Yes. What was your mom's name? Christina. She was born in Russia. Right. And then she came over when she was a baby. Right, yeah. Okay. Um, what type of a person was your mother? Well, she was a jewel to, you know, and uh, she was great. She, uh, I mean, she done everything more so for us than for herself, you know. What type of a person was she? Well, as I said, she was a jewel. She had a heart of gold, I mean. Uh, she, she done whatever, it seemed like, when we said something, you know, she'd work for it. I mean, she'd get it for us instead of saying, you, why, why do you want that or something like that, you know, I mean, she was always willing to do anything. Baking, of course, we needed food, of course, you know, homemade bread, cookies, and everything like that. And I know when my brother went to to the sim, uh, to college for the ministry, she'd bake cookies so he would have enough. And my brother said, well, Grand Mom, I can't ha you can't bake cookies for three months, you know, <laughs> because he didn't get home until either e Christmas or Easter or something like that. 
because uh, uh, we didn't really weren't that rich. But anyway, uh, so so anyway, she wanted to do this and she wanted to do that and and then well, you know, you could call. I mean, you know, our telephones weren't <laughs> oh, <laughs> they weren't uh, really working good. You know, I mean, they were on a fence pole. You know. <laughs> Going down, uh, I said, you know, and every once in a while, telephone's not working. So we went down. How was the coo had grieve? You know, I mean, the cow pushed around on it, and then it fell off. You know, so <laughs> anyway, that's the way. That's the way it was. But anyway, she was what I would say a real jewel. Were you close to her as a? Yes, mm -hmm. and she was really close to us. Uh as I remember when we moved into this house, you know, or even the wedding, you know, I mean, you know, they they had the food at the house up up at the her place, up the next place. Oh, I said, you wouldn't believe what they all made, you know. I mean, all a full course, you know, and then my mother was making kugels, and then my dad would be hauling them down here, you know, and. Kuchens and kuchens and kuchens and kuchens. <laughs> and and her mother was a. Uh, uh, they were the ones that done the f food, of course, yeah. But on that, I think she was a wonderful lady. Only she had it when she was sick, you know, she had leukemia. And then we'd always see her lay against the building, you know, out out the barn or whenever she was, you know, and we'd say, what's the matter? Well, you know, at that time, you didn't know. She said, oh, it's a bisschen schwindelig, you know, it's kind of dizzy, you know, that's all. She said, that's all right, I'll get, I'll be all right after a bit, you know. And she was losing all blood, you know, all the time, you know. Yes, and she was never to the doctor until she was in town and then she got sick and then a uh, uh, business place in town where Dad was good, knew well. He took him to took her to Jamestown, and she never come back. Seven days, and she was gone. You know, bled to death. You know, I mean, well, anyway, it's chewed up. You know, yeah. How long was she sick for? Well, the years. She must have been. I don't know. She wouldn't tell us anyway. I mean, but anyway, we didn't even know anyway. But she knew. I mean, I'm sure. But I know there was years that she was, you could see that she was leaning and stuff like that all the time. How old were you when she passed away? Uh, I was 20, 28. We were married already. We were living in here already. She never got, she only got to see one grandson. And that was my oldest, my brother's son. He was a, a year old. And our oldest son was on the way at that time, in 1950, And that's where my oldest son was born. Um, you said that she did a lot of cooking. Was she a good cook? Yes, she was great. Great, yeah. What were some of her, her uh, best dishes? Well, <laughs> fried potatoes. <laughs> Fried potatoes. I mean, that was a. It seemed like that was a. Every time, even my wife did that. You know, when uh, Sundays, you go to church. You know, and then you'd come home. You'd cook the potatoes, and then when you'd come home, all you'd have to do is fry them, and that was the dish for the Sunday. And noodle soup. She had. I mean, a lot, a lot of soup. You know, I mean. So I mean, and baking, of course, bread, and especially the. Uh, the molasses cookie. <laughs> that was uh, sort of our favorite, and I guess she, whatever we liked, you know, that's what she made too. But, but on that, she made others, a lot of other stuff too, especially Christmas time. It was cookie and cookie and cookie. Lots of it. So, when you were growing up, how did she express her anger when she got upset with you guys? 
Well, I suppose, you know, if she got a hold of you, we paddle it out, then I guess that kind of settled things, you know. I mean, I think that was the best remedy that I knew that she had, you know. But uh, very seldom that, uh, well, with my anger when I was a kid, I cannot tell you. But uh, it must have been terrible. I mean, I, uh, I felt so sorry for her. <laughs> How about love? How would she show her love and affection? Well, she would... Uh, uh, all sort of biased things and stuff like that, and then the hug. Uh, the hug was really uh, something that my dad never did, you know, but my mom, you know, she she would sit down if you were sick or something, you know, put her arm around, and then it'd feel better, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was really great, though. Yes. It was, she was something else. Was your, did your mom have any fears? Well, I, the, the only time, I mean, it was tough, you know, when my brother was in the service, you know, he was in World War II, he was, he was drafted and then he was in, he had a six weeks, weeks training and then he was uh, shipped out, you know, and he was gone for four and a half years before he could come home again, after the war was quit. He was in the South Pacific all the time, and he was wounded six times, and he never got home. I mean, as long as he could go, you know, and I guess that's uh, that's where there was a lot of worries. My dad, even my dad, you know, he, uh, I know he had the, got the Purple Heart, Silver Star, and uh, whatever. I mean, everything that was, you know, he, he got, and he come home, and well, he didn't make it long, you know. He didn't even make it 80 years, you know, and then he died. And, uh, but anyway, he was, he served well. I mean, and he said, you know, I, uh, he said, you know, uh, when he wrote, you know, when he wrote a letter, you know, you, it was censored all the time. You know, they cut out, you know, it, it really didn't make sense. You know, and we, and we wrote the same thing. You know, that's security, what they had now. Then compared to now, you know, now you can talk, <laughs> talk across the ocean, you know what I mean? And the, uh, I, I don't know, it's another. So was this your older brother? Yes. Your, was he the oldest Yes, son? yes. Um, yeah. You were born in 1922. So he was born been... in 20. Okay. He was born in 20. You would have been old enough to, to enter in the war. I was, I was. I was down for my physical and everything. I was drafted. But uh, my my youngest brother was going to school, and then I could, you know, one had to stay on the farm. And I enlisted four times, and I still couldn't get in, you know. But uh, uh, it was always the excuse, you know. And, and the farm that my dad was farming, well, I mean, we really didn't produce that much stuff, you know. And I had this twenty two I could have used, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Did you have a twenty-two when you were a kid? Yes, I, I got it when I was twelve years old. We, we were, uh, at that time they were, they paid a penny a, a gopher. You caught gophers. We had so many gophers, so I got this. I uh, this uh, hardware store had this gun, you know, and I still have it. Uh, it a dollar seventy-five cents, and I had a have 175 gophers till I had that gun. And you still own it today? I still have it. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Uh-huh. The, the kids say, Dad, you can't shoot it no more. It just doesn't hold the... <laughs> you load it and then it takes off right away. <laughs> it, the, the spring is not holding anymore. I mean, so we could fix it, but anyway, it's an antique. So besides gophers, did you do any other hunting? Oh, yeah. We had wild game hunting all the time during the winter months, my brother and I. I shouldn't say, but we were hunting skunks. And they were worth $2.50. And then weasel, mink, muskrats, and rabbits. And that's our, that was our spending money. So what would you do with the money when you... Well, you know, you... Uh, we 
they had a, they had a show hall in Streeter, so we went to the show every once in a while, and then, and my brother was old enough to go dancing, to dances, you know. So, a ticket was twenty five cents, you know, and then, uh, I remember when I took my wife out for, when we when I was old enough to go out, you know, and then, I had, we had, uh, five cents a bottle of pop. And then so I buy her pop, and go to the show for a quarter each, and then we'd have a cone ice cream, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, and you know, for seventy five cents, a a dollar seventy five cents, you had a night out, you know. I mean, but anyway, that's where we spend the money with. And then, when I was dumb, you know, then I, I had to buy this bull Durham cigarette uh, tobacco, you know. And I mean, so you know, you spend foolishly too, you know. <laughs> How old were you when you first tried tobacco? Well, my cousins come in from Montana, and I was about twelve years old, and uh, they, they, uh, when they come in, you know, then they, I don't know. Anyway, that's how it started. They said, uh, "Do you know where your coffee is?" I said, "Yes." Can can we have some? So they they roll coffee in a, I mean in a cigarette, you know, or leaves, you know, dry leaves, or they went out behind the barn to dry manure and then they rolled it in. <laughs> yes, those were, and that's how it got started, you know. How long did it last? <laughs> well, I I quit, you know. I mean later. Well, I really wasn't a heavy smoker, but still. Uh, I I quit about thirty years ago, and like my dad on that, you know, he was a smoker too, and then he quit. And on this one tape, he says, you know, he had to stop playing. You know, he was puffing, so he said, "Yeah, must man mal ausruhe, hat er gesagt, muss man mal husten, da muss der Schnee, der Schmuck raus und der und der Stab, you know, <laughs> and that." And so, I mean, to get his breath back, you know, again. He says that in the, yeah, well, yeah, well, he says. You know. Too bad I can't find the place for else. And then he, uh, in this German song, you know, they were playing, and then in one place he, he's playing one of his old waltzes that he played for the dances, you know. I said, Dad, how did you, uh, how did you find the music? Well, he said, I didn't know a note, you know, I just, he said, I start playing, and as long as they were dancing, I was playing. <laughs> so it really didn't matter what he was playing, but anyway, and, and everybody, I remember the older folks, you know, that, how they were saying, you know, that, oh, your father, you know, he just sat there all night long and played and played and played, and we were dancing, you know, he said, he was just, he could play all night long. He played the accordion. accordion. Yeah, this old Constantina, a button thing, you know. Did he ever play with well, you? Played the guitar a little bit. Did he ever play with you? No, he didn't play with us anymore. It was only my brother played then, you know. But no, my dad wouldn't play anymore after my my brother could started playing. So he said, "Well, I guess I'm retired." But he played the organ, you know, and all by ear, you know. I mean. So when you played the guitar, did you was that all self-taught as well? What? When you played the guitar, did you teach yourself how to play it, or? Yeah, well, all we knew, you had to know your chord, you know, and switch them. And, I mean, I think it's just come. It's just come to you. And I have the old guitar upstairs, too, yet, but it's uh, ruined. My grandkids went after it, and, you know. But it was a high-priced machine, too. It cost me three bucks, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um. You mentioned before a little bit about the dirty thirties. How did your mom and uh, dad cope during that time? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, they they were not trying to show it, but you know, I I know that they were hurting. You know, I mean, because uh, uh, you couldn't sell anything. You you were lucky if you had. Well, the only thing is they lived on the cream, you know, that you milked from your cows. And 
Oh, well, and then, uh, like like my dad, you know, he he had to work. They come out the WPA, you know, he had to go for thirty dollars a month. He drove down fifteen miles with the horses to uh, to uh, they had a slope a hill, you know, chop it with picks and stuff like that, you know, and haul it. Loaded onto the wagon and then planks and then they lifted the planks and dropped the dirt and that's what he uh, and anything that he could get what but where where were you gonna find work you know I mean you really couldn't do anything so so anyway uh, I think the uh, sometimes I think you know that's why my mom died early <laughs> she was just plain played out she was wore out I and mean, then. But my dad lived 86, you know, so he was not too bad, you know. How old was your mom when she died? 51. And we thought she was an old lady. You know, that's, uh... Yes, it... Uh... And then, and then of course, you know, I mean, my mom had to take care of my dad's mom, mother, and, uh... Well, you know how that is, you know, I mean, uh... She was kind of getting kind of rough late, you know, in the later years, you know, and that. She had a lot of heartaches, I mean. How many children did your parents have? Well, we had four, three boys and my uh, sister. Can you take me from oldest to youngest? Who was the oldest? Eldo was the oldest, the one who was service, and then I, and then my sister, and then my younger brother, Ed. Okay. <coughs> were you guys close when you were... <coughs> yes. My oldest brother and I, we were very close because it seemed like he was growing up at 14 and I was a runt. And everything I wanted to do, I was supposed to help, and everything I wanted to do, I couldn't do. You know, like harnessing a horse, getting that harness over there. So... Uh, he uh, told me that I'm supposed to stand on a milk stool, you know, and take the harness and throw it over, you know. Well, the milk stool and I fell over, and the harness on top of me instead of the horse, and he got a bang out of that, you know. So, so towards last, it was he threw the harness over, and I had to do the, the buckling up underneath the horse, you know. What I mean, so until I finally grew up. And that was it. When he left us for the service, I, I finally grew up, you know. <laughs> what was your sister's name? What? What was your sister's name? Flora. Flora? Can you describe Flora? What type of a sister was she? Well, she was a spoiled brat. No, I mean, uh, anyway, I, she was the only one, and, you know, I mean, she always said we beat her up, you know, but maybe we did. I don't, I don't know, but anyway. Uh, she was nice, I mean, kind of... Oh, trying to get it. Well, anyway, whatever I should say is uh, trying to see if we would help her <laughs> do things, you know. So other than that, she was she was a nice young lady. I mean, she is, and now she especially. Uh, she always wants me to come out to see her every every year. I come out to see her so. So, I mean, she announced, and she's in pretty rough shape. She always was sick from young, I guess, you know, and uh, now she's got arthritis so bad and transplanted bones in her fingers and, and I don't know, she's got surgery now, the second, second knee already and hip she had done and, I don't know, it's, she's just uh, a wreck. Your youngest brother, what's his name? Edwin. Edwin. What type of a brother was he? Well, he has to be good because he's a pastor. Yeah. So, so no, he he he's good. I mean, uh, that's another thing. When my mom had died, you know, he was going to school. Well, then when he come back home from the summer months, well, so he stayed with me, with us too. You know, my dad and him. So he. He, every once in a while he mentions, you know, he thought he was an orphan. But then we took him in, you know, I mean, and so we helped him get through school. And uh, 
And now I guess he appreciates it, and but uh, he's retired, and now he's got his own problems. You know, I mean, that's another thing, you know. His wife has Alzheimer's, you know, and they just put her away now. So uh, I guess, but other than that, we, I, call, I call everybody, you know, I call them once a month. My sister calls, and I call her. So we're, I think we're close, and when I go on my... I normally go on my yearly trips, you know. I mean, I go to Williston. I have a son up there. Then I fly out to Billings, Montana, and then I, from Billings, I, I stay by my cousin out there. And then I fly down to Salt Lake and then to Boise. And then I go to Arizona to my oldest son. And then I go to Cincinnati to my other son. And my oldest brother, my youngest brother, was living in Charlotte, North Carolina. So I flew down there, you know, and... My cousin is in Dallas, Texas, so I went there. Uh, and then when my wife was still alive, well, then we we were in Hawaii three times, and we were in Europe, the London, Ireland, France. She wanted to see Paris, France, and she got to see it. The Switzerlands, Germany, the Netherlands. So it was interesting. It was all Easter time. And, you know, in Germany, when the bells are tolling all every hour, that's beautiful out there. Great. And we got to sleep in feather beds, you know what I mean, and feather quilts, you know. I mean, it was, it was different. And then, of course, you know, you went out eating. My son always took us to old houses, you know. Uh... uh uh, what did you say? Anyway, uh, so when we went to eat breakfast all the time, uh, they didn't have any coffee, but they had wine and beer. So they always asked, what do you want to drink, wine or beer? Because the coffee, you know, their water is the Rhine River, and, you know, their traffic is there, so they have to purify that. So that's why... Uh, your water was more expensive than your beer. And then uh, they said, I said, well, I'll take a beer. Well, it, he said, what, well, what do you want? You want a stein or you want a, a bottle? I looked over this guy, you know, he had this stein with two handles, you know. Well, I said, I'll take a bottle. Well, here he comes with a quart anyway. So, I mean, it's all the same, you know. <laughs> Uh, you just couldn't win, you know what I mean? But anyway, uh, it was uh, it was great to learn those things, you know, that your your environment, how, how clean everything was over there. That's another thing. Paris, France was dirty, but Germany, Switzerland was beautiful. And then from Paris, France, we went on a train all the time. And it was a rubber tire train, you know, and... You'd sit in a glass compartment all by yourself. And you could see everything. and You could get off. In an hour, the train would come back again. You'd be on your way. So when you were growing up, did you ever ride a train before? Or? Well, the only time I got a train ride to Fort Snelling, Minnesota, with my army physical. Until, uh, we, I left Napoleon and... Uh, at midnight, I made Hankinson, you know. That's how fast we were going. <laughs> so, since you went there for your physical, did they have to come all the way back, and did you have to pay for that? No, or the government the paid, government yeah. Paid. Okay. But it was cold, and then there was no heat in the train car, and uh, uh, there, there was a crock water there, but that was froze. So we really didn't have much to, and they didn't stop, you know, to eat. <laughs> so why did... Um, did your dad, or did all, I can't talk, did your younger brother also enlist? No. No, just no he, your older brother? No, he was, my, well, we did, my oldest brother was drafted. You, oh, he was drafted, and you yeah. tried to enlist. Yes, but I mean, I had my physical, the government told me to go anyway, but my youngest brother was too young yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what about school? What was school like? Well, uh, it, 
it was uh, what it pretty good. I mean, the teachers were uh, pretty nice. I mean, and it always seemed like the school teacher stayed at our house, and she stayed there. And then, uh, so you had to be nice, you know. I mean, that's one thing I know that. And there is difficult days, you know, that you had to stay in and stuff like that, you know. And uh, I, I, I remember, uh, <laughs> I was supposed to remember reflex action, and I couldn't get it. And I wrote it on the board, fifty times, and I, to this day I remember it. It's reflex action without the will of the brain. <laughs> So, and and one one embarrassing moment I had was uh, uh, we had a subject about sheep, and I was supposed to make a sentence of mudden. Well, uh, I said the mutton, the sheep. Well, it's mutton is a meat, you know. And then the teacher said, you know, uh, I don't know, but I think you didn't read your. Well, I suppose I guess I didn't, you know, to explain. So those were those were things, and and uh, one time uh, I was in the first grade. I remember that we had a, a barn. You know, people, you know, yeah, further away they drove with teams, the biggest ones, you know. Anyway, we went down to the barn, you know, and. Um, there was a hole in the door, like, you know, a little peephole, you know, and, and uh, them guys went in to smoke, and I was supposed to watch that door, you know. So anyway, I was watching them smoke, only once the door got open, you know, and, and the teacher walked in, and I said to the teacher, teacher, look what they're doing. <laughs> uh, and I got punishment just like they did, you know what I mean? And no more races for six weeks. <laughs> So that was uh, kind of interesting, you know. And we played ball, and we drove sleds and stuff like that. But uh, it was noon hours, of course. So was it a one-room schoolhouse? Yes, and eight grades, and one teacher. And um, I, re I remember my wife. <laughs> she was teaching, and I said, how can you have all those grades in one, one day? Eight grades, you know? Fifteen minutes a grade. I mean, subject, you really. And then one day, one time she got sick, and then she said, Well, I guess there's no other way, but you have to go and they have school today. I said, It's a breeze. It's a breeze. I went over there. The kids laughed at me. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so, I went home, and then she said, well, how did school go? Don't even talk about it. <laughs> she said, I figured. I told you what to do. Shut your mouth and just let them read. You know, yeah, but I thought I knew it, you know. <laughs> so that is an experience, a real good one. <laughs> when you started school, um, did you speak German, only German, or did you speak oh, English yeah. as well? It was German, of course, yes. Mm -hmm. So was it hard to change into the English language? Well, see, we had a teacher that could speak German. And then she, you know, well, kind of at home, you know, my, my dad kind of knew English, you know, too, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, so he was trying to tell us sometimes. and But that didn't work anyway. But anyway, she, she was kind of helping us out, you know, when she stayed at our house, you know. Uh, but it was it was tough, I'll tell you. I mean, I how how you could but and you know, you caught on right away. But I mean the whole school was like that, you know, everybody didn't know. The only ones that maybe well even the Finnish Finnish people didn't know any better than we did, you know what I mean? So it's all the same, you know, I mean, uh, you just had to work, I guess, until you got smart. So were there Finnish students in your school? Not in not my school, but I mean the 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 school next to us, about three miles south, was. Were all the students in your school German Russian? Uh, most of them, and a lot of them were. Uh, Kettlers were Russian. 
I mean, there's uh, uh, people that were Russian, you know, from ancestors, but the kids really didn't speak Russian. You know, they were more so in the English. They were better off than we, I think, the way it's up. Yeah. About how many students were in your school? Well, uh, I think at one time we had 28 in a one-room schoolhouse. And they were, you were packed. You were, I mean, there's a lot of times you had to sit two in a desk, you know, I mean, and the bigger desks were for two, the other said three, so I mean to make room, you know. And yeah, it just crowded. And how could a teacher do, you know, study all, teach all them, you know, that's another thing, you know. And and the pay they got, you know, that is another thing. My wife thought she was $97 a month. That is a lot of money. Whoa, we were rich. <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought what I was going to ask you. Oh, yeah. You mentioned that you were hired out as a kid. Did that ever affect your schooling? No, see, we were only hired out after school. We had seven months of school, and then when the, say, like, my seating was done or something, well, I mean, my youngest brother helped my dad, and then we were hired out. I mean, on, on that, it didn't bother, I mean, the schooling. So your dad then, was he, um, did he really want his children to, to get an education? Well, uh, there's only my youngest brother that got uh, high school and college. But I started high school for two years. Uh, and then uh, I was offered a job for 75 cents an hour. And, and I said, wow. <laughs> so I quit school, you know. I mean, I was in a thrashing rig, you know. I was always working for the thrashing at $3 a day, you know, and 14 hours. And here I was offered 75 cents an hour, 14 hours. But lady, that was 10 bucks an hour. I mean, $10 a day. Wow, was I rich. But then, of course, I had to pay my dad's thrash bill first, yeah. So, but still I had $30 left, you know, for the year. And then we hunted, trapped, you know, so. It was great. So did you like school? No. <laughs> Why not? I don't know. It just didn't soak. <laughs> I was one of the slower learners, I guess, you know. Henri and slow. That's, what I, that's all I can say, you know. My brother was a Sharpie, the oldest one. My oldest brother and my youngest brother... My youngest brother made two two grades in one year. He started school at five, and and he graduated at the age of sixteen. So, and I, when started high school, I think at sixteen. No, <laughs> uh, anyway, I just nothing really soaked, you know. I, my dad says, uh, "What do you really want to do?" Well, I said, maybe I should pitch but pitch manure, you know. I think that's the best. <laughs> no, I thought. Uh, it, was, it was different. But anyway, I was not. Now I wish I could do it over. I would know different. But at that time, I was a smarty. So did you always want to be a farmer? I didn't want to be a farmer to start with. But then... Uh, uh, when when we got married, you know, and then my dad, well, the, I was farming, my brother and I were farming before we were married with my dad. And then, of course, you know, my my brother and I, we took over, and so we buy, bought the equipment, you know, it was ours. So, well, my dad gave me a tractor like that out there, you know. And then I had to buy the rest, and I got two horses and a... And a Grass more for the horses. That was my inheritance. And uh, my oldest brother, he 
he got a McCormick tractor. So anyway, he he stayed home, and uh, I left. And I was going to... Uh, there was an a Army base in Jamestown at one time, Air Force Base. So I was going to take flying lessons. And my dad says, so, well, do you have the money? And I said, yes, I have the money. Well, he said, how much does it cost? $75 for a lesson, you know, to learn how to fly. And then he said, well, uh, I'll tell you one thing, you know. Maybe you should go out and work out behind the barn. And that's where I went. <laughs> because I was too young, you know. I mean, you uh, if you weren't old enough, you didn't. You listen to your folks, you know. So that's why I guess I didn't do that. And anyway, on that, I had some jobs, you know, that I would have liked to do, but uh, it just didn't work out. So I think the girlfriend, see, the girlfriend was from down here, you know, and I would have been in Jamestown, so. <laughs> well, uh, this is a songs, a couple of songs for mostly for weddings, and one of Miss Ich hab ein Rausch vom roten Wein und das fehlt nicht so gut, aber dann kamen mir die Gedanken ein, das Mädchen muss ich noch sehen. And the other one is a. Uh, uh, Schön ist die Jugend, bloß er kommt nicht mehr, sie kommt nicht mehr, oh nein, sie kommt nicht mehr. Schön ist die Jugend, bloß sie kommt nicht mehr. And then we have a, oh, sort of a funny song, it's a, Ach, du lieber Augustin, 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 ach, du lieber Augustin, alles dies hin. Das Weib ist versoffen, das Geld ist verloffen, und ach, du lieber Augustin, alles dies hin. And then there's one. Du, du liegst mir im Herzen, du, du liegst mir im Sinn. Du, du machst mir viel Schmerzen, weiß nicht, wie gut ich dir bin. Ja, 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 weiß nicht, wie gut ich dir bin. <laughs> we have, uh, my brothers and I, we kind of entertained ourselves in the winter months, when it was stormy or some cold, no place to go. So we, uh, we had this song. Down in the valley, valley so low, late in the evening, hear that train blow, hear that train blow, love, hear that train blow, late in the evening, hear that train blow. Oh, then, ah. Was gibt mir mein Vater, wenn ich's heirat denn tu, wenn ich's heirat denn tu, wenn ich's heirat denn tu. Er gibt mir zwei Schucks im Sarkob und ein liebes Barros. Noch es gibt mir mein Vater und gibt er's mir nicht, dann heirat ich nicht. Dann sag, geh ich zu der Nachbarn seine Mädchen und ich sag's ihm aber nicht. <laughs>